A very specific image in my mind, a glamorous party in a beautiful building, a feeling in the room of energy and excitement and fun. You have to be elegant but strong and confident, but have this darkness to the fragrance as well. Florist is a London brand, we've been here for nearly 300 years. The fragrance journey for us was a love letter to London, we wanted to look at London through a different light. So we started this journey two years ago and we looked at the 60s and 70s and 80s. We went out and found customers who'd lived through these periods and we built this collection of journals so these people wrote memoirs for us and we pulled them all together and that went into the perfumery brief of trying to capture that essence. The decision to go to the 20s we found this rich palette of cultural references many of whom kind of weave and knit their way through Floris's history. 1927 had its own kind of energy it was a huge period of innovation, but also it was a time on the cusp from you start a decade as part of the previous decade and you end a decade as part of the next decade. But the most interesting changes that happen that re-establish the culture of that time happen around sort of six and seven. One might well feel we are at the moment as well. What we see in the 1920s is really the beginning of an era that we would recognise as a, a kind of modern period. We see a period of sort of economic boom for much of it, a real flourishing in popular music, jazz obviously. <laughs> In 1927 actually sees the first cross-Atlantic flight, Charles Lindbergh. A number of modern art movements from very early in the 20th century are really coming into fruition, really entering mainstream culture at this point as well. These ideas of sort of machine age, modernism, all of this is impacting art, design, society. And we see this impacting women's lives. The way that women are dressing, the freedom that women have, the ability to travel. Some women over 30 given the right to vote for the first time. This idea of suffrage, of emancipation, impacts women's social lives, impacts the way that they're dressing. So fashion is very clearly seen as being linked to the social situation at this time. One of the big movements was the female movement in many ways that period. It's fascinating to look at, for instance, Virginia Woolf, who published To the Lighthouse in 1927, which was very much investigating the whole idea of gender roles. She really explored gender breakdown almost in dress. And again, that's a great parallel with today, where we're seeing gender binaries really beginning mm. to be sort of deconstructed and broken down. Beauty becomes <clears throat> much more to the fore. It's quite an interesting kind of juxtaposition that you've got this sort of slightly intellectual kind of androgynous thing going on. You've got women working more, you know, being more emancipated, although still not terribly. But at the same time, you've got beauty really coming to the fore. And, women going out there and kind of spritzing fragrance in public. Suddenly you start having women carrying handbags around for the first time, clutch bags, you know, with their rouge, with their Clara Bow lips and everything. So you have this kind of interesting thing of these two strands of, of things going on. The term bright young things became more of a cliché. We looked at this period specifically and it was when these artists, so Beaton, started his career in 1927 in London. Evelyn Waugh wrote Vile Bodies three years later in 1930. Virginia Woolf wrote To the Lighthouse in 1927. It's this group of people who were part of the set suddenly then turned the time into their career's work. So we looked at that and fed that into the brief in terms of kind of that became the inspiration for the fragrance trying to capture that essence of Edward and his team making art out of these stories. <laughs> 
Beaton came up quite a lot while his career was very much after 1927. He's in the history books of Floris being a customer of ours and we have receipts and ledgers of his. He wrote a quote where he refers to luxuries more than just fine linens and diamonds. It's about a, a certain way of style and class that you would bring to something sharp and pencils on the bedside table and a bottle of Perrier and Floris Violet Bath Essences on the side of the bath, which actually came after we'd already put Violet into the fragrance, so it was just a kind of a nice knot. 20s were a very experimental time. Rather than having traditional floral notes, you were able to use this extra palette and it, there was this sort of fantasy element to the 20s which definitely was reflected in, in perfumery. We wanted it to really have a modern twist to it. The idea was to work on a completely different fragrance, citrus fragrance, which had a real modern character to it. And then this citrus fragrance also had a really oriental side to it as well, and it had the darkness. And so I have these two fragrances, and the citrus fragrance was too modern and just didn't seem to fit with my vision that I had of the era. So I thought, okay, let's try and take elements from both of them and combine them. We don't normally do that with a fragrance. It's quite an unusual way to, to work, to actually have these two completely different ideas and then sort of fuse them. You get these, these fantastic moments of explosion where everything's coming together in, yeah. a, in a rather wonderful clash. 